Two households, both alike in dignity. In fair Verona, here we lay our seed. Hello, my beautiful budding sommeliers. My name is Steffi, and welcome back to Steffi's Wine Club. The next three little episodes, I'm going to be doing a mini series on the region of Valpolicella. Now, Valpolicella is a region in northeast Italy in the province of Verona, and it makes five really amazing wines. We have Valpolicella Classico, Superiore, Ripasso, Amarone, and Lesiotto. Now, in these three videos, I'm going to be exploring the Superiore, the Rapasso, the Amroni, the differences between the styles, the differences between the productions, what they have in common, how they taste, and how much bang you're getting for your buck. First video, I'm going to be talking about Classico and Superiore. Now, Classico Valpolicella is just sort of the base wine in the Classico area, which is a zone is part of Valpolicella. And the Classico zone is where sort of the best conditions, the best terroirs, the oldest vines tend to grow in this area. There are wines made in the rest of El Policella, which can be really amazing, but the Classico zone holds a special place in my heart because I love these three wines for very different reasons. So the main grape in Valpolicella Classico wines uh, is Corvina. And Corvina is a very common grape grown in this area, and it's really lovely, but it's been split into, in the 90s, it was split into two grapes, Corvina and Corvinone. And Corvinone used to be just considered a mutation of Corvina, but now they're separated. So Corvinone is actually also able to make up to 50% of the wine, but Corvina must be between 45 and 95% of the wine. In this one, we can also have Rondonella and Molinara, but for the most part, it's Corvina and Corvinone. Right. Classico wines from Valpolicella have a minimum of 11% alcohol by volume and are aged for at least one year. What I'm drinking today is a slightly higher level of Valpolicella wine, and it is a Superiore. So the difference between Classico and Superiore aren't actually that much of a difference. It must be at least 12% alcohol by volume and be aged for one year in wood as opposed to Classico, it just has to be aged one year. Also, they tend to use um, better quality grapes uh, from the vineyard, so they tend to be richer, a little more fuller bodied, and a little bit darker in color. So, what is our wine of the week? Well, this week it is our Valpolicella Superiore from Zanato. It's a 2015, so it's still pretty young. Um, you could wait a couple years still to drink this, but it's quite nice now. I've noticed personally on the nose, it's very um, strong notes of raspberry and black pepper, and that carries through the palate along with like a little bit of licorice and clove. It's a really lovely wine. I even pick up a little bit of smoke from it, and I'm guessing that's from the barrel aging on it. But it's quite easy drinking, it's quite light bodied, quite um, high in acid, which could make it a really great wine for drinking on its own, or with something like chicken or lighter meals. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, that's all I have for you on Classico and Superiore from Valpolicella, but tune in for the next couple episodes which are going to be on Rapasso and Amarone. Until then, as they say in Italy, saluti!